Hey, welcome back to the Sailors Podcast. Uh, it's awesome having you guys again. Uh, before we move on, we usually promote our local business. And your business for today is a civil construction company. And they're based out of uh, West Auckland. It's called Mali Mali Contractors. From concrete work to retaining walls to drainage, they can do it all. Uh, also, their masters at uh, Tunupuaka and Mixing Kava. Let's go. Uh, follow them on Facebook and Instagram under Mali Mali Contractors. And yeah, support your local bus- uh, your local businesses. Or if there's any local businesses out there, if you're keen for us to kind of promo your stuff, let us know and we got you. Let's go. Togo, cue the music. It's a boy, Nizzy. Yeah. Let's go. Alongside E-Rocks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, what's up everyone? Talo for love, Malo Lay, Bulovinaka. Welcome back to the Sailors Podcast. My name is Sefa. This is my Toko Atu, and we have a special guest for you. Man, this guy is, Ooh. man, quite a famous guy so far in this uh, Sailor's podcast. Uh, man, I don't even have any words. It's an honor to have you, Uzo, Mr. Lolangi Vicinia. How's it been, brother? Welcome, brother. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, good, thanks. Yo. How are you guys? Yeah, yeah good. Too, was, good was. Oh, so it's, it, yeah, it's an honor to have you, bro. It's a privilege to have you. Um, we're looking forward to this, this episode because, like we said before, man, your name has been ringing. It's been ringing in our ears, man. Oh, no. <laughs> we, you know what? That's good. We have you on because you can tell your side of the story. Yeah. <laughs> There's always two sides to the story. There's always, yeah. Yeah. When, the, when the other boys were saying, I was like, nah, I want to hear from Lungy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's good. Welcome, so, bro, welcome. Yeah, welcome, bro. You're back in Auckland, yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. I just arrived back a couple of weeks ago from uh, Hawke's Bay. Nah, it's mm. good to be back home. Oh, yeah, missed the family and Yo. all the friends and yeah. Man, oh, welcome back, right? Because you're in Dale, yeah. You're usually in Avondale. Yeah, Avondale. yeah, but I stay ourself now. I've been staying ourself like the last <laughs> five, six <laughs> years. Yo. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> Two seven five. Oh, <laughs> A man with uh, our stuff even. <laughs> bro, I'm trying to. I'm trying to look for some. You know, recruits from out here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> nah, it's not, bro. Well, it's good to... Uh, I'm good always West-West, bro. Yes, sir. West-West for life. Yes, sir. Right right. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's good to hear that you're, you're back home safe uh, from the Bay because I know, you know, with all the traffic lights and stuff like that, you know, with the new rules, you know, it's mm. hard to try and get in, get back into Auckland. So good to hear that you're back home as well. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Mean bro, but what have you been up to, Docs? What have you been up to in regards to like um obviously coming back from 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 um overseas doing a um doing a stunt at the Canes, but playing at Hawks Bay, bro. Like how was that of the season and whatnot? Um unfortunately, um how you guys went down to to the Tasman, but how um yeah, how was that, mate? Like um you're traveling um, down there and, and and yeah, kind of staying down there, bro. Yeah, so when I got the opp- uh, opportunity. Um, last year to go down to Hawke's Bay when I came back from Japan. Um, yeah, I was, I was really excited and happy mm-hmm. at the same time because I, I didn't really know what I was going to be doing, to be honest. Like, I thought I was just going to come back home and then just, like, work a nine-to-five job and, you know, no. work, play club rugby. So to be able to get that opportunity again to play here in New Zealand, um, yeah, it was really special for me and my family. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, awesome, uh, and, and and going down to Wellington uh, with the Canes this year was was pretty hard, eh? Like to be honest, yeah. Um, never really lived down there, let alone you know play like that was my first time playing for the Hurricanes, and you know mm. obviously being an Auckland boy, I've, I've you know I've always been a Blues and Auckland boy right through, and yeah, to be able to play for another team was was huge, eh? Um, obviously a different environment and culture, and um, you know I also learned some stuff down there, so yeah, now it was it was good. Mm. Oh, that's awesome, bro! And um, man, congrats on you and and, and that that kind of season, uh, that season of the Canes and also the NPC. But um, how was your upbringing, bro? Like, how was that like? Um, oh. you know, growing up and um, obviously having James and 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 Bess there, mate. Um, you know, um, the old fella kind of drilled you as well, bro. And um, yeah, how was the upbringing, bro? Like, um, school wise and 
and um, you know, just just the footy um, side of things, and and even other sports, bro. Because I know you guys kind of played some other sports as well. But how was that like um, growing up, bro? Obviously, being a Pacific Islander and growing up like you know, um, just like all the other brothers, you know, it was always hard, um, especially not like having much, um, you know, support and like financial wise growing up. So yeah, it was pretty hard on me and my siblings. Um, we kind of had to like, you know pretty much start from the you know the bottom and yeah. and just um, be grateful for for whatever we had during that time and and I guess yeah my parents had a big um, huge impact on that um, especially my dad yeah. um, you know growing up he was always number one supporter in, in, in everything that we did and um, even though if we didn't have any money or like you'll somewhere somehow find a, a way to make things work and yeah uh, I guess he was just always there to um push me and especially my little brother um, Sebastian yeah. um, through all our sports and especially rugby so yeah really grateful mm-hmm. to have that um kind of support yeah that, that was me as well bro because like I remember your old man bro and um <laughs> um RIP to the to the old man um and he was a he was such a uh great supporter bro like I remember you know your your um first of Dean games bro and um with Michael Sellers old man um and then, you know coming up and <laughs> Oh, like oh, bro, those are the days. <laughs> yeah, bro. If you know, you know, we eh? like. If you know, you know, bro. Like those two were hearty, man. Like on the sideline, like they missed. I just man. felt sorry for the refs, eh? Hard, bro. <laughs> Hard, bro. It was like the refs were just trying to, like, you know, do their job, bro. But you have this guy's old man and Michael Sellers old man going hard. Oh, but then you don't like, like you don't want to tell your dad off too, because eh? you're like, because <laughs> you know what's gonna happen. Eh? You, bring to the car. <laughs> you don't want to go, dad. Don't do that, because. Uh... <laughs> Right, no, they're, I, I they're, they're, they're Graham Henry on the sideline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, bro it was, uh, I remember this one time, bro. We played a best and like, bro, best played an outstanding game. And um, the old man came in and told all of us that played a bad game that we played a <laughs> mean game and told Bass off him. Oh my god, but Bass had a bro, honestly, oh, he was hard to like, like, pretty much like, for example, like, like what you just said, like, if if Bass yeah. or me had a good game. It was hard to impress them, me. Eh? Like, yeah, there's always one thing that he'll tell you, like, oh, you didn't do this right, or what happened over here. Like, yeah. We're like, fuck. <laughs> typical <laughs> island parents, eh? Bro, facts. <laughs> typical, bro. Oh, so, I just played the game of my life, man. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, uh, growing up, bro, and um, obviously uh, went uh, went to school out of mags. Um, started off there and then um, finished up at Kelsen. How was that, uh, the transition, the, the rugby culture, the differences between that? Um, and, um, yeah, if you could uh, touch on that, brother. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I started my high school days at um, Mags. Um, obviously, like, there was a few of us boys that um, that came from suburbs that ended up going to Mags because our coach was deputy principal there. So, um, yeah, didn't really... Um, argue about that but um yeah well, at, at first I was enjoying it but then like I kind of like cushioned myself like do I see myself going far in rugby if I if I stayed there yeah and and that was always like a tough decision because like you know I obviously had some friends close friends that, that I was going to school with and and talking with my family like if um you know having to make the switch to coming to Calston because James was already at Calston so that was one thing that I wanted to go was to be 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 in the same school as my siblings. Yeah. So yeah, to be able to leave Mags and come over to Calston, um, I found like it was a kind of like an easy transition. Yeah. Because I you know, I knew I knew a few boys that were already at Calston and um yeah, I just wanted to have a good opportunity um with rugby and I felt like Calston gave that to me and you know, even to this day, like I wouldn't be a the rugby player or person I am if I you know if I didn't come to Calston. So yeah, I give yeah. thanks to all the staff and the all the boys that helped me um yeah mold me into the person and player I am today. That's that's mean burn like I remember uh, your stint at Calston Burr growing up um playing those those years and um bro you're an outstanding player about like mm. such power, speed, skills and how was that bro? Because I, I remember um, you're the you're the face back then, bro. You know, like everyone feared 
Lolangi Visinia, bro, when they came up when they come up against Kelsen, bro. Like, how was that pressure? Like, how did you take that, bro? I like to be honest, like, you know, you hear a lot of like room or like a lot of people or other schools talking about Calston and like, oh, you know, um, they're not gonna do well or oh, they don't have a good team, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Like, and I kind of use that as like a motivation to like mm. Um, push not only myself but also my fellow mm. teammates and even the coaches like yeah um because I remember that start of that 2011 year um yeah Taylor Adams who was our captain yeah. and um <laughs> Taser. <laughs> and um Ethan Tenare he was who was our head coach they both went to the they had like a conference like a meeting of all the other first 15 captains and coaches mm. and at the talk at that mm. at that conference was like Kelston was going to get relegated to 1b yeah. Um, and to hear that, like, bro, I, I was like real, like, I was angry, but at the same time, I was just like, wow, I want to prove, or mm -hmm. I want us to prove to all of those schools and people that, that we're here to stay and, you know, yeah. like, Cause we're it capable was, of doing anything. It was off the back of, because that, the the past year, yeah, with grandma, that thing that happened with grandma, oh, you know, yeah. the big rule, because <laughs> Cause yeah. like even from there, yeah, like a the lot of mate. We didn't see a swing on the camera, bro. He was he was oh, good. No, bro, I was, <laughs> no, I was being a good person, man. <laughs> see, they, they, people don't know the good side of me now. See, I like, know. Like, see, now I know. <laughs> but even because I think yeah. it was off the back of that too. Eh? A lot of people were even like mm. anything that has to do with calcium is just like nah, yeah, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. nah. Mm. Man, that's crazy. And then that's the that's actually the first time I'm hearing about that meeting too with um mm. Taser and, and yeah, Anthony's win. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah you, I know. You, you played over um with a great squad that year as well, eh? You uh, had um, obviously uh, Taylor Adams, um you had Kirby playing a second five. Kirby. You had Wetty at Kirby. <laughs> you, had, Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> you had Wetty um you had Wetty for for a uh, center for, for yeah. a bit. Uh, mix on one wing, uh, you at the back, Mal Jean um, and Tony, Tony, Tony Timisa. <laughs> yeah, so that was a oh man, that was a hell of a hell of a um backline there, and then having the boys at the and doing the hard um hard yards on the um yeah. at the front. But like, bro, how was that? Like looking back and 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 seeing those guys do well now, like, far I played with these guys, and you know, and mm. um, you know, back in school, like, how was that feeling? No, it was, no, it was, it was a mean feeling. Like to be able to play with those guys, and like, you know, obviously, like we were the underdogs, and like, you know, but to us, like, we knew that we were like, you know, yeah. we were capable of like, you know, doing good yeah. things, and we just like had yeah, you know, huge confidence in each other, and like, you know, and that's the thing I I, I liked about our brotherhood. It was it was real tight, eh? Like. Yeah. Um, even off the field like you know everyone was close and like we try to do things together and and then when it comes on Saturday like you know the boys just lay it out on the field and you know yeah. so like I felt like it was a uh, with the boys had a special bond together and, mm. and to and and to see some of the boys like push through and higher honors like it's yeah. good to see that eh? Yo, yeah. mm. uh, that's mean like it's always the it's always good to see uh, the boys, um, not only push, not only in rugby, but even in other fields. Like I think of mm. someone like Kirby with his business that's going as well. Okay. Like he was, he was one of the other boys. I'll be like, nah, this guy's gonna keep going in rugby. But we all knew that man. He had like even with his other business that's going in now. So yeah, shout out to all the boys that are carrying uh, it through. And yeah, big ups to you guys. But even uh, after high school, um, because nowadays when you see it, um, I don't know, I don't know if you agree with us, but. Um, nowadays, when you play first team rugby, it's almost like you're in the professional level now because it's being televised and, yeah, and yeah. you know, the media is up there in your face right now. Um, so, if, but it was during that year, yeah, to 11, where slowly the TV games are coming on mm. for first yeah, team. Bro, bro. And then, because the 211, you guys had a couple games on TV, yeah? Yeah, we had like five, I think. So, we were yeah, like, yeah, yeah. real lucky, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We we're real lucky that we had a lot of games on um, TV, and that kind of like pretty much like um, you know broadcast all our games and um, and our talent that we had in yeah, Kelston. Yeah. There's yeah. not many people knew about like what the talent and some of the guys that are that, that went through like right from junior levels all the way to the senior level. Yeah, and like yeah, mm. 
Man, and, and like in, yeah. in saying that, because right after high school until 11, you were in the, the sevens campaign, yeah? So you were in that sevens talk? Yeah, so at the end of my um, last year of um, school, 2011, um, I got invited into this in the Auckland sevens camp. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like me and like two other school boys. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and it was hard because like I didn't mm. really take sevens that serious. Yeah. Yes. Like I, I enjoy like watching it and like just, you know, jamming just for, you know, just for yeah. fun. But then like to be able to get asked to come to an actual like um, camp and, uh, you know, yeah. uh, semi-professional team like yeah. Uh, yeah it was really special and then at the end of that year um i got asked to get to the new zealand camp yeah. and to even get invited on that like i was buzzing here because like you know this 18 year old comes back yeah. from oh, straight out of school like yeah. not knowing what what it's like to be in that like professionalism like yeah so i was like excited and buzzing but at the same time i was kind of scared and nervous because i didn't know what to expect yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. to be honest, when I was in school, I didn't really like take like my diet for one. Like, I didn't take that serious. <laughs> well, no, I'm I was counseling, man. Pies, <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. Taking the pies Yo. across the road. <laughs> and two, like, I didn't really like do like extras, like in the gym and mm. fitness stuff. Like, I just relied on my, you know, natural like mm. ability. In the... But, but when, yeah, when I was in the environment, like, it kind of opened my eyes to like, you know, what it's like and what potential I have if I oh. do all these little things right. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it was like What's, a high opener. Um, now that's mean, bro. Like again, congrats that's on mean, that. Man. That like you know that that would have been a massive call for you as well and your family mm -hmm. too, because at that time it wasn't just you making that choice. It was mum and dad, <laughs> the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in saying that, like, what's what's something that you wished you had learned in high school? that would have helped you into guess, like the professional area in rugby? I think like, yeah. Cause it took a while to me to transition from mm. like a schoolboy to an actual professional athlete. Yeah. So if I had, if I had to change something, like I, I wish I had actually like had like a plan, like, Yo. like plan my week. And like, so for example, like my food, like what to eat, <laughs> before after like workouts like you know stuff like that breakfast lunch dinner and then um like i wish i was in the gym early like you know yeah. trying to get stronger and like because to be honest like I, I didn't really care about that back in school like i felt like oh yeah like i'm good enough you know but when i look back like even now like the school schoolboy level now like a lot of first of beans are like doing weight sessions or, speed or, sessions you know facts. all that fitness yeah. and everything which is good because like you know that's developing the rugby and mm. like everyone's getting better and you know so yeah that that would be something i'll i'll change of yeah. that's awesome because we talked to um one of the boys as well that we interviewed before and you know he said that similar similar answer too and also the discipline um would have would have mm. like being disciplined not only attitude wise but like the diet and stuff like that. Yeah. Because in high school, bro, like, bro, especially in Kelston, bro, sausage roll, pizza, bread combo, you're done for the thing. Uh, bro. Hey. <laughs> and then the cream loaf. Bro, that oh. was um, dangerous. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was dangerous, bro. It was like 258. <laughs> one loaf for yeah, yeah, boys. And those Pam's 1.5 liter drink, bro. Oh, bro. <laughs> oh, that's man. the KD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so simple. Thing in that um, sevens, um, system bro like um who was that uh that player that took you or took you under their wing and kind of helped you out at that camp because bro like how you said like you're nervous and scared like mm. bro i'll be nervous and scared as well so yeah who took you under their wing and kind of like um helped you you know develop in that and understand the game as well i had a couple of boys um obviously one of the calston old boys um dj forbes yeah, yeah. so he was like our senior like he was our captain and also like the seeing um guys in our team and so yeah i i'll i'll always be following him around and um and i also had guys like charles Puto, um frank Alai, like those guys because i looked up to them like you know in, in that last year of school so to be able to like train and play with them was really special too so yeah i just kind of like um yeah follow what they were doing and taking uh, like you know little tips now and then and yeah kind of help my game We's doing a Broncos team, mate. No, nah, then we didn't really do. Oh, I don't think Broncos were around there at that time. Yeah. 
Yeah, we were doing yo yo. I think it was no beat, beat test. We had yeah. beat oh, test. Yeah. Um, and then oh, you know, 80, 60, 40s, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah bro. Bro. So we did a lot of those. That's stiff, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we just did all these other running uh because Gordon Titchens was coaching us, and man, yeah. he's probably the hardest coach that I've been <laughs> in there. Oh, far out. Yeah. Oh, awesome, bro. Like it's good to share on that, and I think um like we also have a few boys coming through the system that are like, um, you know, in that kind of um, pathway of, of going to sevens and condors has opened up too, bro. Like, you know, mm. we can see these Tongan barbarians, these New Zealand barbarians, uh, these Samoa barbarians, you know, it's opened up and it's like giving young boys more opportunity to kind of strive and, and, and be their best, you know, not like your time where it was just you either make New Zealand or not, you know, or yeah. you, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. um, it's good to touch on that in regards to like a discipline and whatnot, but also um, like touching on like the diet and whatnot, because I think um, a lot of boys these days don't understand that kind of um, kind of system. Eh? But like, thank you for sharing on that. Bro. And I think a, a, another question will, will um, that's been floating around with a lot of people um, would be what was something that you kind of learned um, at sevens that you continue to hold on now and use in your daily life or at training at the Magpies or at the Canes? Um, I think, um, for me, it's, uh, it's to, not, to not be comfortable. Oh, like, you know how when you get to a certain point and then you get, like, comfortable and then you just kind of, mm. like, relax and not... Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. For me, like, I always found ways to, like, get better. So, yeah. like, even if I knew I was good at something, like, for example, if I was good at kicking, like, I would yeah. still, like, practice on my kicking, like, you know? Or, like, high ball, like, if yeah. I knew I was good at it, I was still, like... Yeah, so I always just found ways to, like, improve on, like, different aspects of my game, whether it's, like, yeah, on attack or on defense. So, mm -hmm. for me, it was always, um, yeah, just keeping myself like accountable like yeah because i know like there are times in my career where i felt like oh you know uh, i've got everything and i'm i'm comfortable i'll just stay at that level yeah and yeah, then yeah. like and then there were games where i started you know playing average and then started making mistakes and you know yeah, all that yeah. stuff just all bubbled up so yeah, yeah when i look back i just yeah i'm happy that i i still like i was still able to like better my game and also like I'm um, finding ways to yeah um that, that's awesome bro and like speaking on 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 you like um talking about like being comfortable and whatnot and obviously just going from high school into the limelight of sevens and then going from there into the limelight of, of 15s you know playing 15s and the blues um was did that take a big toll on you on, on trying to balance everything bro to be honest, and yeah, today, yeah, and like, and even my family knows. Like, um, there was a time, I think it would have been my second year in the Blues. Um, I, I was like, you know, I'll just sit at home and I'll be like, "Far, like, can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm at the position where I am." But yeah. at the same time, like those things going on, like you know, obviously off the field, like with family and stuff, yeah, yeah. and then like, and then like when I go back to training, like there'll be days where like my mind's not all there. Mm. So like, yeah, I was finding I was struggling out, I was finding it hard, and um, and you know how like you can't control these certain things that you can't control, and like yeah. you just gotta like you know, yeah, yeah, um, you all for, yeah, yeah, so. Going back home and like you know getting all like having all this stuff happening yeah. and kind of like yeah I was I was kind of like at a point where I was like oh can I continue doing this yeah you know, yeah like you know and then like I started speaking to my partner and you know and obviously my family as well and then yeah, yeah. they was then that kind of motivated me to like you know there are gonna be times where it's gonna be hard but like yeah, I have to kind of like not give up and just push but. Like yeah. find ways to like so even if I have to speak to one of the coaches or one of the players like you know so yeah, yeah. and I found that it was good because at that time um Graham Henry was in our management yeah, and yeah, I yeah. and I had, and I would have one on ones with him like maybe mm -hmm. once a week 
and like yeah. I talk about all that stuff like you know because it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's really um important that you share that kind of things like those kind of important things with um people that you trust yeah yeah because yeah. I know like nowadays like they, they, these boys or guys they're like they don't really like talking about personal things yeah and yeah. they kind of like bubble it up and then they go you know whether it's training on the game and people might people think that oh you know he must be going through some stuff but yeah, just, 100%. You know? and like so i feel like yeah, right i feel that bro? part i feel like that that part of your journey or like your life like that that's important that you you share with someone and and actually find help like yeah because you know if you don't talk or don't speak like there's no way that you're gonna get better or you know that's that's me, bro, and it's mean that you you shared on that. And thanks for sharing, bro, on that. And like, would you say that um, that phase that you went through there um, played a huge part in your decisions of going over um, over to France, bro? Yeah, kind of did. Eh? Like, yeah. um, obviously, there's a lot of high expectations, not only from like you know the people around you, but you know, your family and all that. So, yeah. and and at that time, like you know, I, was, I thought to myself, oh. Like I'm still young. Like, yeah. am I making the right decision or not? But then, like, I kind of like just back myself in. I just said, oh, you know, like this could be a good opportunity. Uh, 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 either could be bad, but it, or it could be good. So, and I and I was glad that it was the good side because not only I got to like travel and like witness that side of the world, but I also like learned stuff and I yeah. brought it back with me when I came back. Because obviously, like honestly, like when I came back to New Zealand. I thought that that was my professional career gone, like finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah. So, but like, I used last year's lo- first lockdown to like train. I was training my partner during the whole lockdown, yeah. and I and I was like eating well and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and just like hoping like something will come up. And I was yeah. lucky, fortunate enough to get the opportunity to go down to Hawke's Bay when um Ozich and um Simzy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome because uh, i think man what what people don't realize especially the viewers when they watch rugby like especially when like i see some of the comments say like for to the athletes like man you guys get paid big bucks to do this yeah, why are you yeah. guys doing this but what people don't realize this is actually like it's not just turning up to a game on a Saturday or Friday or Sunday. There's like a massive load of work that you need to prepare for physically and what you touched on mentally. And, you know, we've, and all the guests that we've had so far, the most, like most of them have had different experiences mentally. And that's why we were so grateful when, you know, with the likes of you sharing that, that battle, uh, you know, the mental health and we do like, that, that's a perfect example of what you said, you know, going to someone that has wisdom and seeking that wisdom and actually mm-hmm. sitting down and talk. And even for our viewers out there, like if you are struggling mentally, make sure you find that circle, find those people that you're close to and just and just talk and speak. Mm-hmm. Because nowadays of the pandemic and everything, you know, we're stuck at home. Who knows when the mm-hmm. next lockdown will be? So find that circle of people that you trust. But that's that's awesome, bro. Because there was a time where you spent at suburbs, yeah, for quite a while. Like you had, you yeah. had a few games at suburbs. It was my last year at the Blues. So, yeah. like the back half of the season, mm. like I, 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 um, it's not because I was like I wasn't playing good or anything, but I just I wasn't like making the team. Obviously, based on like you know other circumstances, but I was lucky enough to go back and um, and and play a better club, and, and that was the year when suburbs won the Gala Shield. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was. I <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, I was definitely like happy that I was part of that um, group that year and to help you know go all the way. So um, yeah, that's something special that I. Who, who I was a, who was the toughest club at that time for you guys to play? Was it ponies? No, was it ponies? No, easy. Nah, not ponies. <laughs> <laughs> Probably grandma. Grandma. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. bro. They always had all the stack players. They yeah. might as well call yeah. them Grandma Auckland. <laughs> bro. The bro, recruits honestly, say. All the super <laughs> players, the NPC players. Yeah. 
Oh. All the academy boys. Yeah. Nice. Man. Grandma, grandma is like the version, the club version of St. Kent's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, man. come on, man! They're just trying to <laughs> make this world a better place, bro. Come on. Nah, try to think. You guys are doing really good. Oh yeah, <laughs> but like <laughs> you know, like after your suburbs, then like because you were in Japan too, yeah. Did, we, did you go to Japan? Yeah. Did you play there? Yeah. So yeah. I was in France for two years, and then one year in Japan. Yeah. How was that? How was the Japan? It was actually good, mate. Eh? Yeah. I actually loved it there. Eh? Yeah, I, yeah. I was I was hoping to go back um if if the COVID didn't hurt because I was mm. already I was already like negotiating for like to extend my stay there in Japan, but then when COVID hurt where everything just froze and Yo. like a lot of a lot of boys came back from Japan, yeah. like with no contracts and so yeah, I, I'm just like I was just lucky that I was one of the guys that got another opportunity to play here in New Zealand. Yeah, man. Yeah, but yeah, Japan was mean, eh? Like, yeah, the people were real like um, respectful and like kind, and and obviously like it was easy to get around because like the trains run every like five minutes. Yeah, the food was nice. Yeah, mm. everything was. Was Was there any mm. cultural shocks for you, like when you went overseas, like you know from? Oh, um, probably France, eh? Like France, yeah. bro. To be honest, like if you're like someone that's like wanting to go over there and you know visit and stuff like yeah i wouldn't recommend <laughs> going there for a long time eh? <laughs> straight up well uh, people yeah there, the, the honest answer all straight right up. i'll cancel friends out of my bucket list rude, eh? like, but surely oh, surely you've learned um a few french words too but like, oh, bro, up, bro? i've lost it eh? <laughs> come on man bro, when i came back i was like there's no way i'm gonna speak that language again yeah. <laughs> Oh, if the old man was there here, he would have smashed you. Nah, like there are some good things here, like about <laughs> but like honestly, like if you go in public, bro, yeah. you just get the eyes of doom. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. what's this guy doing here? So <laughs> oh, oh, look what he's wearing, like you know. But honestly, it was summer there yeah. when I first went over, and I was wearing like a singlet shorts and jandals, and everyone's wearing like suits and like jeans <laughs> and like you know, coats. And I'm like, holy shit. Was it, was it one of those Kathmandu jackets at Polygist? <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Oh, <laughs> my guy, my guy. Wow. My guy. <laughs> Freaking <laughs> France, bro. Freaking France. Oh, man. Man, nah, that's that's me, bro. Like, it's funny because you got the, the opposite experience of Peter. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's probably in like a good side of france but yeah oh, where i was just like oh, yeah, oh, it there was like nothing to do in that city where i was in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. all we had was mountains and snow <laughs> <laughs> and in our contract we weren't allowed to go like snowboarding or skiing so yeah. just the yeah. point of, yeah. <laughs> i could have told him i don't even i've never been to a snowboard <laughs> let me go how was that how was the game there, bro? Like, how was the rugby culture there um, compared bro. to, like, obviously here? Like, mm. How was that? How was that like in, in was, front of, uh, Japan as well? It was different, eh? Like, when I got there, eh? Like, um, obviously the Frenchies, like, they got a different style of playing rugby and um, they, they love the contact and, like, you know, set piece, mm. scrum, lineouts, mm. moors, all of that kind of stuff and kicking. Yeah, so, like, yeah. I was, like, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, but, like, I didn't want to change the way I played. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I, I just like I still like you know. Obviously, I like the run of the ball and, and you know that kind of style of um play and, um and I was lucky enough I had a few like foreigners in our team, so we kind of like um changed or not really changed the game, but like had options of of having that that fast pace, but also yeah, yeah. like that wide that you know yeah, wide yeah, to yeah. wide because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Every team had like the same game plan was to just scrum line up, crash, same way, same way, like you know, yeah. all that kind of all right. so yeah, I, yeah. That was the thing um I found that was different from the style of rugby here in New Zealand. Mm. Man, that's I think, man, I don't want to go front. I keep thinking about what you said. Let's not go to France, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just like no. I hope hey, if you're watching and you're from France. Fix your country. 
terpaksa. Uh, Country <laughs> right now, bro. Buat lah, buat lah, buat lah. If you guys, if you have someone to blame, blame this guy. No longer is in India. Bro, I'm I'm just being honest here because I, I know most of the rugby players won't say this, but yeah, yeah. Thanks, we'll see. Well, you heard it here first. Say this podcast, no lagi. It's not like that. <laughs> Oh man, um, coming into this year, bro, um, you made your return um, back into the Canes, into the Super Rugby scene uh, in the NPC with Hawks Bay, the Magpies, getting to play with your old coaches. Like, how? What was the the feeling being back into NZ Rugby and get to experience playing at home again? Since you know, after a long time mm. being away, I was um, I was really excited, eh, to be honest. But then there was a part of me that was nervous too, because like. Obviously, I've been away from the game and like the rugby here in New Zealand's like evolved. Mm. But obviously, it's kind of changed a bit. So like, yeah, like I, I've, I've been watching like a few games from overseas, like the past few years. But like, you know, you, you don't know what you're kind of getting yourself into until you like actually you're in that situation. Yeah. So like, yeah, being in a new environment like that, that was something new for me. And I kind of had to adapt. I'm pretty quick because you know the season went pretty fast and um yeah so nah yeah I was I was just really excited to be back playing here um alongside some of the boys that I, that I know and 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 also play with so yeah it, was there a, like a change or a shift of mindset docs like um because obviously you mentioned earlier like mm. you thought coming back like that was it for your professional yeah. rugby but now getting an opportunity like, was there a yep. shift of mindset? And if there was, bro, like, what was it? I, I think for me was um, like that having that don't hold back mentality, like that attitude. Yeah, so, yeah. like, whatever I did, like, I just gave it 100%. And, like, because uh, I feel like when I was playing here in New Zealand before I left, I was, like, playing safe. Like, you know yeah. that, you know how you can kind of, like, go past the, yeah not past the boundaries but go over the you know i felt like i was just too like i was just i was doing my job but i wasn't really like get going that extra step yeah, yeah. so like last year and this year like i t- like i said to myself well, now i'm just gonna try and like get every opportunity that i get on to make sure i make the most of it and like yeah and try and make an impact not only for myself but for the team as well yeah well, because yeah. you came back in the first game, I think it was during the Hurricanes. You came back, and I was like, "Surely, this guy's gone massive!" <laughs> like, oh, How? Oh. Right. Wow! <laughs> wow! So <laughs> <Lange. laughs> Bro, I had to like. Obviously, I kind of changed the way I trained and like, and the mindset as well. So. Like first, I had to get my body in the right, um, mm. you know, obviously in the right state. So, obviously, had got my eating sorted, like my diet, and then I was just doing extras and, yeah, making sure I was staying on top of it because, mm. like, in order to play well, you got to feel well. So, yeah. if I wasn't hundred percent, then I wouldn't give my full, you know. Mm. Yeah. So, would you? Yeah, that was something you, that I worked on. Yeah. Would you say like, um, because you you know like. We're talking about physics. Would you say mentally you're stable now, like in a place where you'll be like, yeah, I, I, I think I can, I can run the next few years. Um, you know, mm. being in this in this side of my career. Yeah. So, there was one thing. Um, when I went overseas was, because you know, my first year, I think mm. we played like, all up, we played like thirty two games my first season, and I think I played like twenty five of those games. And like, you know, and, and I felt it in my body. Eh? Like, mm. I was like, oh, how am I gonna like carry on playing like this, you know? And we're playing all these games, and yeah, like, so like for me, the recovery was was important. Yeah, and um, I'm also sure. knowing what my body needs, and and like, so for example, if I need a rest, I'll rest, or if I need to go in and do some stretching, or you know, do some weights or something, then I'll go do it. Yeah. So I think like leading into this year, like. I kind of like listen to my body like, oh yeah, mm. I think I need a little bit more cardio. I'll do some cardio or I need to do more of this, like yeah. re- rehab or prehab, I'll do that. Yeah. So I guess that that's kind of got gotten me through the, the season, mm. um, especially, you know, playing quite a few games. And But but but, but the thing is like, 
there's going to be injuries and, you know, and um, i got to be prepared for that. I can't just expect, oh, I'm not going to get injured or I'm going to go through the whole season without things. So that's another thing I had to kind of um, think about as well is like, okay, what am I going to do when I'm injured? Like, am I just going to sit there and wait for my injury to heal or yeah. am I going to do everything I can to do, like, you know, say mm. when I'm back, I'm 100%. How was it like having, um, because, you know, one of the biggest supporters, you know, if you have a partner in the rugby scene while you're, while you're playing, how was it having mm-hmm. someone like that, and, you know, having your back and supporting you throughout this whole journey? Because I know, like, wives and, and, and rugby players' partners, they, they, they're in that circle too. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. how was that? How was that having your partner being through all of that with you? It was um it was actually really good, eh? Like yeah. I think this year is probably the first season that I've had my partner like with me throughout the whole year. Yeah. Because obviously with COVID, like she came down and stayed with me quite a bit in Wellington and then in Hawke's Bay, she stayed with me the whole time. So to have that to have her there and support me and also like um we kind of cause cause she's also been training as well, which is good. Mm. And um, you know, I'm proud of you know the yeah, yeah. um everything that she's accomplished so far. So we kind of keep each other honest and like, and also like, you know, having her home with me, like when I go to training, come back, like it was really good. Cause like, um, yeah, like I'll talk about everything, like how I'm feeling or, you know, what I'm going through and stuff. So it was good. Man, oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. Couple goals. <laughs> <laughs> what a man! What a man! Well, honest, right. To be honest, if it wasn't for my missus, I yeah. probably, I probably wouldn't been like playing the way I am. Because yeah. when I got back from Japan last year, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna like do nothing and just yeah. you know eat and drink and all that. Yeah. But if she's like, nah, you're gonna train every day, and like. Because you know, because because that's when I didn't know what I was doing. So she's like, yeah, yeah. "So what are you gonna do if someone called you and go, oh, we got a contract for you and you're and you're fat and you're you know you're not in good shape?" <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, okay then." <laughs> so I to you, shout bro, out to my missus. You always, bro, shout yes, out to shout out to your missus, bro. You always gotta trust them to give you the real, <laughs> the real talk, eh? Like, yeah. dang, <laughs> it hurts, but it's the truth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> obviously playing a um a season with the Canes and in the Magpies, and then boom, one of us speaker. <laughs> how was that, bro? Like, right. How was that feeling being back in the mix of Super Rugby, um, and obviously how making a lot, history, a lot man. People, yeah, bro, mm. and how and how a lot of people explain, bro, like it's probably one of the toughest competitions. You know, in the world, you know, mm. um, the Super Rugby. So, how was that, bro? bro was, how did that? How, how did I, how'd you end up there, mate? Like, yeah, if like, you could touch on that, bro. Um, yeah. So obviously, like hearing rumors that oh, this could, this could happen, and you know, we might have a new Pacific team like mm. joining the Super Rugby. Like, you know, obviously when it wasn't confirmed, and I was just talk like in talks, like. I was like actually already getting excited, like. But even though I knew I wasn't even in the team yet, but I was yeah, like, yeah. bro, they'll be they'll be mean to be a part of. Yeah. And then like as the season went, like, um, you know, obviously they hit hit up my agent and they asked, oh, w- like, would I be interested? And straight away I told my agent, I was like, bro, I'm keen. Like, yeah. I don't really care about like, you know, the money side of things. I just wanted to be playing here in Auckland and to yeah. be part of something new, like you know, history yeah. and. Yeah. represent our cultures and stuff like and families like that was something big for me eh? like i've always been a family person like yeah. and to be able to play in front of all of our families and friends mm. you know like that's just something that you can't take away eh? man that's awesome bro congrats on on the on the contract with moana pasrika i know you're gonna go Thanks, well man. and we'll be supporting you throughout throughout the, free, free the, the journey mm. <laughs> <laughs> free tickets for the boys <laughs> for the boys <laughs> <laughs> before before we move on, you spent um we'll go back to the magpies. Um how was it playing with uh with Danny to Zala? Oh man <laughs> get him get him <laughs> get him get him get him get him right nah. now <laughs> nah I was actually bro, it was crack up when I when I first heard about it. Eh? Yeah. Oh yeah um, I think one of the boys told me yeah. and I was like bro who's um, bro, guess who's coming? Guess who might be coming down? This is when it wasn't confirmed. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, who? It's like Danny. 
It's like, they need to sell. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, shucks. <laughs> and then, like, and then the man, bro, the man, Mr. B is like, Oops, how was it like down there? And I was like, I was just telling him, and I was like, bro, it's actually mean down there. Eh? Mm-hmm. Like, the boys, like, to be honest, like, Hope Space is probably the best um, culture, like, team that I've been part of, like, culture wise. Oh, like, man, it's awesome. Bro, oh, awesome. Everyone's like real tight, and like, and there's no like, separation like you know how when you go on a team there's like the senior guys the yeah. young dudes and then you have like the guys in the middle that are like kind of yeah. like yeah but for, in our team like doesn't matter if you're if, it's, if this is your first year or you've been there for 10 years like everyone like has like an equal like you know yeah say like so equal status yeah within the yeah team. so and that's something that i like really like um took on board because like you know there's not you don't really see much of that um mm going around like it's like you know when you're a new guy you just sit there quiet and like you wait yeah. for someone to talk to you and then you talk back yeah for over here where we had some crack up like, even of danny like we need first came down <laughs> straight away he was like making everyone laugh at him. I'm like, just, yeah, just, <laughs> that's the danny that we know bro. yeah hard, 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 hard out. shout out to so, those of danny to style shout out to my lord mr tiktok <laughs> 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 All right, and then um, obviously we want to touch back on your twenties um campaign, bro. Your, your New Zealand twenties of um with the boys, bro. I th- when I look back at um at those photos you guys took, I, th- I think after getting your jersey presentation, mm. you guys were taking photos on the steps or something, and it was yourself. Um, you had RTS there, you had Ngani Lau Mape, um, Ari Ari Savia. Like how was that? Um, like playing then, and then like seeing those guys do really well um, now, bro. But it's it's me, eh? Like a lot of people ask that day is like, bro, like how do it feel like to play with those guys back, yeah. like in that you know when you guys were like eighteen, nineteen, and then now you're like you're either playing with them or you they're in like other big teams, and like I look at it like as um uh, you know. Obviously, those boys actually like, you know, when you get to a point and you feel like, oh, yeah, I've made it. Like, yeah. this is you know, this is it. Yeah. But I felt like those guys were like, bro, I want to try to get to the top. So, and it, yeah, so big ups to all those boys that are, you know, yeah. grinding and carried on, like, you know, yeah. playing well and just, yeah. Yeah. But to be able to play with them, man, it was, it was mean, eh? Like, mm. I felt like I could just sit back and, and watch all of them do, you know, yeah, do what yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. And, yeah, man, but nah, yeah, nah, it's... You guys yeah, fell oh, short, man, anyway. You guys fell What's short? That? You guys fell short, <laughs> 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 yeah, bro. So that was crack. I, I was just watching Ari and um, Ngani in that um, podcast, and Ngani was explaining all the players, like yourself in there, and then at the end, he was like, yeah, we still lost. <laughs> oh, bro. It's all that we cake today. Had a, <laughs> honest, we had a stacked as team, and then... Yeah. But okay, like, I think it came down to the last 15 minutes, man, and we just, yeah. Just straight to <laughs> Yeah, straight up. It was, it was <laughs> Dangale and Mamane. <laughs> but, um, bro, it's funny because um, there's, there's, a, there's a story that we heard in the 20s um, camp. Uh, uh, it, was, it was told by, uh, oh, we'll leave us, I don't know. Well, let's yeah. not say his name. Let's not say his name. Yeah. But there was a story that um that was told. I want to hear um, your side, bro. I want to hear your side. Yeah, we want to hear. And apparently, uh, I think all the boys, this person said, all the boys are, you know, they were all on one side. And, and there was actually a grand piano on the other side of the room. Oh. Um, <laughs> and there was a girl, Um, you know, uh, there was someone. Well, we, there was well, we there. want to ask, bro, why'd you get yeah. the arcade name? <laughs> oh. Bro, honest, to be honest, I don't know where that R. Kelly came from. Mm. I thought it was going to be another name, but I don't know. Yeah, because right now being called R. Kelly is all. <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. That's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, meet that guy. But yeah, I heard there was a grand grand piano. Oh, and all they heard was, what's so your fun name? and games, you know? Yeah. I just wanted to show them what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. You know? What the, the barbershop singing was like in Kelston. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Willie show. and Mika. And, and Mika, oh, hey. bro, yeah, shout out um, to the um, politicians. Poly- politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Politics. Um, oh, man. Uh, that was crack up, bro. Yeah. Like, I think the boys were just mucking around in, and they were like, 
they just kept egging me, egging me on to like go and sing because like, bro, and then I just got up and then I went because one of the boys, his name was Natawa, like he went King's College and he was yeah. good on the piano. So he went and played on the piano and then I just ran up and started singing. <laughs> and it was, everyone was just cracking up. Hey? I was like, wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> the signs, bro. You'll never forget it. Good man, of, man of many talents. <laughs> um, and then we'll, we'll move on, you know, just the last two questions before we get into our, our quick fire. Uh, so what's what's next now that you're in one Pacifica? What's what's next now for you? What what does the year look like? The new year, 2022? Um, so obviously <clears throat> trying to build a um, solid um, culture and brotherhood with a team. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, so hopefully um, we can get tied and get to know each other and then, yeah, play a, a, a different brand of rugby than um, than all the other New Zealand rugby, super rugby teams. So yeah. that's just like, you know, obviously the Islanders like to run run hard and, mm. and, and use the ball and, you know, all that flair and stuff. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, looking forward to playing with the boys and hopefully go well. Um, but the main thing I was... Um, I don't know if you guys know about the the rules that the road rugby just oh, brought up. Yeah. I think it was last week. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So now, yeah, now I'm eligible to play for Samoa after all go. these years. No. <laughs> yes, yeah. Go. So that's something I'm looking forward to next year before yeah. the World Cup. So yeah, hopefully it all goes well. And you heard yeah. it here first, guys. Lalangi <laughs> Visnea. Leading the Super Tau. Oh, what? Oh, no. I don't know. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, Mali. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. And thanks for that, um, Lolangi. I think the last question that we have for you before we get into our um, quick fire questions is um, if you could tell the 18 year old Lolangi in an advice um, or a heads up um, for what's ahead, bro, what would you tell him? I'll tell him to. <laughs> <laughs> nah, to be honest, like straight up, like no. I'll tell him to like to work on like like because obviously, like on my last year, like mm. I was lucky, like I had natural talent, Yo. and that's probably what, like most of it is what got me to where I was. But if I could go back, I'll, I'll tell him to. Like just keep training hard, like even behind the scenes, like work on the stuff that I need to get better at. And because obviously, yeah, I was good on attack, but I couldn't couldn't really tackle it back in school. Yeah. Eh? So mm-hmm. that was something that I would I would go back and change or like give advice is yeah, just to keep working on the stuff that you need to get better at. And yeah, that's and awesome, bro. Still kicking well, goals, bro? Bro, no, nah, I haven't been kicking a while, lately. <laughs> eh? Nice, man. Like nice. at training, cool. I'll just muck around, but like, yeah, surely it was crack up, bro. Oz came up to me this one time and he goes, Bro, you might be the next one. Like, you know, if, <laughs> if our teens go down, you're gonna be the next one in line. I was like, Oh, shucks. So then I started practicing at training. Oh, nice, bro. <laughs> oh, nah. bro remember That's those all... black high tees? Yeah, yeah, bro. Legal. The league oh, ones, bro. Those are the ones, eh? but I can't find them, mate. Eh? Yeah, bro, you're nudging them over from like stop. 50 bro, like, 55 meters, mate. Oh man, nah, that's nah, that's whoever, awesome, bro. Whoever, like, okay, like with, we'll your, with, with your story and stuff like that, like you know, always knowing you in high school and even in second 15 with uh, with Miss uh, with, uh, with oh, Wiley and Cooley. No, I'm <laughs> I got see I'll see. <laughs> like we we've we've always we we always knew that you're gonna be a standout player from high school, uh, even till okay. now. And you know, we're just we're really looking forward to seeing where where, where you head from here on out. And I honestly I I'm, I'm I really believe that you got like another 10 years in you, bro. Like oh, within thanks, within bro. this career, bro. Like and we'll be I feel like I'm you. already 40 already. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be supporting you from the 808, bro. But we'll move on to our quick fire, our yes. quick fire oh, questions. So cool. uh, we've got five quick fire questions for you. There's one question at the end where we've asked everyone or the guests that we've um, interviewed to uh, watch out for that one. Okay, your first question is: Do you have a game ritual like before games, like pre-game ritual? Do you have any? I just like playing games on my phone, eh? To be honest, oh, yo, yo. like I try and get my mind away from like the actual game, 
So like oh, I just play games and just try and yeah. And yeah, I always have a game? nap too. Oh nap, have a nap. Oh clash of clans. <laughs> Dogs, 10 minutes. Bruh. 10 minutes, bro. 10 minutes right now, bro. That's okay. Honest, you'll be surprised of who and how many boy rugby players play this game. Name name one. Honestly, name one. Bro. Name one. Okay. Um do, do you know Jonah Lowe? Oh yeah. yo, he plays it too. With the Chiefs, yep. Yeah. Oh, who else plays it? Josh Kaifer. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yo. We, we, we got a bit of a clan in our wow. the boys. I've heard it all. Full of duty, eh? <laughs> full of duty. Um, your next one is what's your go-to excuse if you're not keen to do fitness? <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> There's Mullers, bro. My my heavy. Nah. <laughs> This guy was known, bro. This guy was known when we had to do the Andy run, bro. This guy will see him grab his hemi and walk to the side. Totally, but my hemi was actually bad. <laughs> yeah, bro, like, you've got a pretty bad totally. training. So at, at the end of their season, bro, I went and got a scan and they said that I ruptured one of my yeah. hamstrings. Oh, nah. Young <laughs> Ali. <laughs> All right. That's a true story now, guys. Hemi. As long as he's hemi, that's... Yeah. All right, your next one, um, the third one. What's your go-to pre-game track? The one track you blast before your game. Hmm. <clears throat> but I actually like listening to slow jams. Hey, I don't know why. Hey. Yo. But yeah, I know. I just kind of. Ladies and gentlemen, there, there it is. <laughs> what? What's your latest Any one? Slow leave, jam. leave the door open. <laughs> <laughs> now we're sat on the floor. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Versace. It's, 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 it's weekly on it's a Sunday and Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> but it's a Versace or Lulangi on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, you guys are bad. Um, the next one. What's your um? What's your version of like a perfect date? With your with your with your muscles. What's a it's perfect a date looks like? Bro, to be honest, yeah. I suck at like that kind of stuff play. <laughs> and even she always tells me, he's like, bro. Yeah. What like, do you usually uh, do when it's your turn to, to plan the date? Oh, bro, you might as well expose yourself, bro. <laughs> You're really halfway, bro. Oh, I'm going to try and probably go somewhere romantic, like other, like on the beach or something, like sunset, you hey, know, picnic or something. Go, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Save yeah. yourself. <laughs> you saved yourself there, mate. You saved yourself. Uh, and then this last question. Um, who's five people living or have passed? Um, you would love to sit down for one night and just have dinner and just chill with five people, living or people that have passed on. Celebrities, anyone? Anyone, uh, Obviously, my dad. Yeah. The one like yep. he's probably the number one person in my mm-hmm. life that um, you know. I'm thankful for everything that you know he's done yeah. and given to me, and so yeah, him, LeBron, <laughs> yeah. yo, yes. yo, LeBron, yo, um, what else? You got to beat Danny, bro. Richie, Richie McCaw, Ooh. Uncle, Uncle Rich. yeah. um, what else? Chris Brown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alan. This guy, man. It's amazing. We've got one more. One more. And who else? No, two. That's two? No, it's one more, isn't it? Yo, oh, the old man, Chris Brown, LeBron James. LeBron. Richie McCall. Richie McCall, Richie McCall. yeah. Yo, last Ooh. one, bro. One more. Stephen Watt. Stephen Watt. And um, what's her name? Wonder Woman. Oh, oh Wonder Woman. Crush. I wonder I why. Eh? 
<laughs> oh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The man himself, Lolangi Visinia. We appreciate you, bro. Thank you for giving up your time uh, and coming on, jumping on, and doing this uh, little interview, this little podcast episode. Um, check him out, uh, everyone. He's going to be, he's in the Moana Pacifica squad. Uh, hopefully, we get to see him uh, strap up in the blue jersey a couple of years. But yeah, we'll be supporting you, bro. Thank you again for sharing your story and just being vulnerable with us too. To all the viewers, make sure you go follow him. Lolangi on the Insta and everywhere else. So thank you, brother. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, oh, man. Last Friday call. night. Surely you can sing it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> it's been a minute. Eh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Publish up, please. Thank you, everyone. Say less. Say less. Say less.